Now today's talk is entitled Our Changing Sun and Wimp Orbs. So what you'll notice in the background of this picture, I've brightened it up a bit, is uh, the event from last year where what I thought was only one orb attached to the sun. And um, if you notice there, there is a second and possibly a third orb attached to the sun, if we look carefully enough at this. Anyway, um, I'm going to be doing another video um, on why NASA is covering this up. Uh, but for now, I, I want to talk about the classification of orbs. So, in the book we wrote, or finished, uh, in late 2006, I had a number of classifications of orbs. Um, you know, the ones that go give energy to trees, the you know, you've seen enough of uh, anyone following the work will see the, the, uh, the en enough of, uh, images uh, from that book. Uh, there are different color frequencies of their charge. Um, there, there are different um, uh, orbs associated with um, all types of different events in lightning storms that uh, we filmed in every sim single climatic condition. And so we started to classify orbs that interact with everything. And obviously we, um, our later work after, say, 2006, uh, I started to put uh, um, videos up on YouTube. And a number of these will be talking about uh, dark matter and carbon-14, uh, um, the variation of carbon-14 or carbon-14 increasing in solar minimums. Um, and this is based on a number of theories that were generated after I finished the book uh, in 2006 because I had chance to see how my findings of the old bar wave related to the universe because I believed it to be um, the universal energy. Uh, described by science as dark matter, described by the ancients as prana or chi, you can call it the Higgs boson if you want to, um, but all of this stuff is part of the missing mass of creation. And um, so I went and had a look, at, I've been looking at uh, particle physics um, and uh, in astrophysics, uh, a WIMP, so these, I've classed them as WIMP orbs that attach to the sun, and they will remain that. I don't believe in their, their gravity-based model, um, but it is a, a model, and I'll, I'll explain why these are WIMP orbs. So a WIMP is a weakly interacting massive particle. Now, obviously, you can see uh, the size of those spheres that are attached to the sun. Um, you know, there's several, uh, you know, seven, seven times bigger diameter than 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 the Earth. And that's the size of them. They're massive. Now, I'm not sure that the the astrophysics physicists believe that they're that big. So wimps are a hyp hypothetical particle, and they're not the playground wimp now, serving as one possible solution to dark matter. Um, these particles interact through the weak nuclear th force. So that is uh, the description of a wimp, and obviously we've seen, as you can see in the picture, uh, the massive particle that is attached to the sun. So you have to say, well, what are they doing? Or what are they doing in this? This is a theoretical model. Not everyone believes in it. But what are they doing to our sun? Or what are the properties of this theory? So, um, because of their lack of el electromagnetic interaction with normal matter, so they don't interact with matter, WIMPs would be dark 
and invisible through the normal electromagnetic observation. So once that orb moves off the sun, it disappears. Because of their large mass, they would be moving slow. And I'll talk about that in the uh, next video. So we've got the black. Um, and therefore cold as well. So because of their large mass, they would be relatively slow moving and cold. Now obviously they're, they're looking black in the red of the heat of the sun. So you have the observation of them being black, and I can I'll talk about I'll do an analysis of the of the of the uh, other images that I've got in my next video. It'll be too long, and it'll take you over too many diverse subjects. Even now it is. So although the existence of wimp, a wimp is hypothetical in, at this point, it will resolve a number of astrophysical cosmological problems related to dark matter. Um, there is a consensus today among our astronomers that most of the mass in the universe is dark. So this is now the 96% of stuff that we haven't got much of an idea of, um, of what it does. So even though our science world has, a, has an arrogance about this understanding the universe, they're only understanding the 3% and maybe 20% you know, if you give them credit, but then that 20% is based on something that's wrong, like gravity, uh, forming planets, so, you know, we've got a, we got a big problem, and obviously NASA is covering this up, and my next video will talk a little bit more detail about, you know, I mean, their fear must be that they, this, this linear mechanistic model will fall apart, um, anyway, so, in the videos, um, uh, this is a 2008 or 2007 video I talk uh, uh, about the missing mass of creation of how this all bar wave is it and so um, I think that I can safely say that I've been proved right ignored <laughs> and uh, and obviously ridiculed but proved right uh, nobody likes a smart ass. I don't consider myself a smart ass. I'm just a bloke who, through maybe the way that my mind works, um, and I'm slightly dyslexic, and anyone looking at those videos will know that, um, perhaps my mind works in a different way to others, but then everybody's minds work differently. You know, every thought is a, is a private thing, you know. So anyway, so in those videos I predict um, this would be the missing mass of creation. And um, uh, proved right. So we want to move on to um, the weak interaction. Um, which is what this uh, 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 WIMP particle um, acts through. So, and this is this is the 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 important um, part. It is responsible for the radio. So the weak interaction of this. Uh, so this wimp part theoretical particle. And I don't believe in their model. So um, is responsible for the radioactive decay of subatomic particles. Now. There have been reports, and I was predicting an increase in carbon-14. I wasn't predicting the alteration of its decay rate. Obviously, the decay rate in carbon-14 is altered, and that has implications on our radioactive clock. I was also predicting back in 2007 a quicker spin, and obviously the Bandarachi earthquake occurred, but they put it down to a ballerina effect, and I was predicting pre predicting that. Now, if this radioactive decay is altering the clock ratio, then we're not going to be able to tell correctly whether our Earth is spinning up. And if it is um, decaying quick, quicker, or the rate of decay is decaying quicker, then we're not going to know that the spin of the Earth is quickening. And of course it doesn't fit into the linear mechanistic model anyway. But the weak interaction and the WIMP theoretical particle um, initiates the process of hydrogen fusion in stars. 
and so we have um, uh, again again I, I I see the Sun as a plasma plasma and, and some of my other videos so uh, I talk it as a, a as a pro biological uh, type of Sun um, using the division processes within its core changing its quadrupolar poles um, but at the end of the day their their model suggests that it's uh, interacting and causing the hydrogen fusion in, war in, in, in the inner star and obviously uh, later on in that uh, video the uh, the sphere is blasted off its surface so that is their take on um, this event and I will be doing a further analysis of the detail of why these orbs are moving to the Sun attaching to the Sun and being blasted from the Sun <coughs> thank you very much for listening um, it's just an add-on video this is just to try and fill some of the holes thank you